Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video about God's utility function, the idea that biology can usefully be seen as an optimization process, and that evolutionary change acts so as to maximize some utility function. If you compare the natural evolutionary process with man-made genetic algorithms, biological evolution looks remarkably like a gigantic optimization process. The question of what the utility function of biology is was raised and answered by Richard Dawkins in his 1995 book, River Out of Eden. He phrased the question as follows. A good way to dramatize our task is to imagine that living creatures were made by a divine engineer and to try and work out, by reverse engineering, what the engineer was trying to maximize, what was God's utility function. The answer he gave was DNA survival. This video addresses the same question, but gives a completely different answer. What else do living systems maximize besides the numbers of copies of their genes? Clearly bodies and metabolic systems are produced in numbers which equal the number of genomes produced. Taking a metabolic perspective on the problem leads us back to a proposition first articulated by Lotka in 1922 that living systems act in, act in such a way as to maximize entropy production. Organisms seek out sources of order and put these through a metabolic engine. They use the resulting power to grow and reproduce and in the process excrete de degraded waste materials. To give an example, the Earth acts more like a black body than the Moon does, as a result of its living systems. It more effectively degrades the Sun's radiation into heat. Tropical rainforests are expert energy degraders. Trees go tall so that they can reach the Sun's energy first and degrade it all the more rapidly. For another example, currently researchers at ITER in France are working on an enormous fusion reactor to allow us to accelerate the conversion of order into entropy still further. Sometime after Lotka, it was noticed that other self-organizing systems, besides living ones, also acted in a manner so that their rate of entropy, entropy production was maximized. These were sometimes known as dissipative structures because they dissipated order and produced disorder. Still later, a similar principle was extended to all irreversible dynamical systems, and a mechanism was found to explain the phenomenon. At a low level, high entropy states are more common than lower entropy ones. So if a dynamical system changes in some randomly selected way, it is likely to move into a higher entropy state. If the high entropy states are st statistically share features, then the theory allows the evolution of the features of the system to be predicted. This idea was derived from Jane's principle of maximum entropy production by Roderick Dewar. It is a simple principle that derives irreversible dynamical systems of all kinds, so that drives irreversible dynamical systems of all kinds to move rapidly from low entropy states towards high entropy ones. Viewed from this perspective, self-organizing systems are entropy generation engines that seek out and feed off sources of order. In fact, self-organizing systems can be seen as a de degenerative type of living system in that they propagate themselves using a primitive kind of reproduction. For example, flames give rise to more flames, crystal seeds give rise to more crystal seeds, and so on. Living systems are then seen as the set of self-organizing systems whose reproduction involves the reliable propagation of lots of complex information. In a sense, living systems are self-organizing systems that have developed a memory and then got into habits. Selection endlessly compounds and reinforces the skills of those that degraded the available order first and best. As a result, modern ecosystems are experts at entropy maximization. It should be noted that there are some differences between the entropy maximization of Dewar and that actually followed by living systems. Dewar's mechanism is a primitive one. It is totally blind to the future, while living organisms can use fat, batteries, reservoirs, and other mechanisms to store resources in anticipation of future shortages. Also, they have brains that help them to anticipate future events. Dewar's formulation is the degenerate special case of the maximization principle that applies to systems with no brains and even to non-biological systems. Maximum entropy production represents a powerful optimization process at the heart of all biological systems. The general principle has explanatory power not only in biology, but also in other types of self-organizing systems. Indeed, a simple version of it can be applied to any irreversible system, and so it represents a gen genuine universal utility function. Now, we know from the expected utility theorem that when we have a system that acts in a way that seems to maximize two quantities, it is possible to seek a single maximand that's the true one. 
So should we go with the DNA survival of Dawkins or Locke's principle of mac- maximum entropy production or some combination of the two? I think the choice is clear. Maximum entry production explains roughly the same things as the DNA survival of Dawkins and a whole lot more besides. It is a more general and fundamental principle and should be preferred on those grounds. From this perspective, maximum entropy production explains why organisms act as they do and the details of genetics are seen more as implementation details, the mechanism by which organisms operate and propagate themselves so that they can better generate entropy. The driving force that underlies biology thus gains a concrete foundation in the basic laws of statistical mechanics. So, is God's utility function, that quantity which is maximised during the operation of the universe, simply entropy production? Alas, there are also some other pretenders to this throne. One is Prigogine's theory of minimum entropy production. However, de Waugh claims this to be a special case of his more general entropy maximisation theory. Another is the principle of least action, also known as the path integral for formulation. This principle does not involve entropy, and so doesn't, its domain doesn't really overlap with the idea of maximum entropy production. But again, the expected utility theorem suggests this represents an issue that needs sorting out, but that must be left for another day. Um, enjoy! <laughs>